you could come today. It's very good. Um, we're going to get started uh, with the Mini Grant Program Informational Workshop. And I am Joan Harrigus. I think I've met all of you already. I'm uh, the Mini Grant Program Manager for Sweetwater. And this is Jay Fiker, and he was kind enough to be able to take his time today to come from MMSD. He's the Neighborhood Outreach Coordinator at MMSD, and he's going to be explaining the part for those of you who are planning green infrastructure projects on how to measure how much rain capture that you will have. So that's kind of a new thing for us today. We're going to measure that. I mean, new this year that we're going to be measuring that. So I asked him. He's the expert on this, and so he's going to explain that section of it. So we're going to get started, but what we're going to do, I'm going to, this is pretty basic presentation. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, you know, uh, what is a watershed. I'm going to go into, um, uh, you know, the, 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 who we are, and then into the actual application process, okay? So, and what green infrastructure is. So. Uh, it could be, you know, 45 minutes maybe, but we'll have Q&A, um, and you can ask questions throughout any time if you'd like to. Just, just, just uh, ask when you have a question, or if you want to save questions till the end, we can do that too. So, um, Jake is still in here. Okay. Um, so, um, so anyway, um, let's get started. Um, I don't know if there was anything else that I wanted to tell you first before this. No. We do have another one of these sessions on October 11th. It's the same presentation. But if you know anybody who wants to come for that, that's fine. And again, uh, we're filming this because we're going to put this on our website. And we're going to have that available so that those who can't make it can see that on the website. So that is there for people's convenience, too. Um, we want to thank our funders right off the bat. We've got Fund for Lake Michigan, MMSD, and CH2M. They funded our program for the 2018 program. We're going to have new funders for next year, for 2019. Sweetwater protects and restores our shared water resources. That's part of our mission. How do we do that? Raising public awareness about reducing stormwater pollution, promoting the use of green infrastructure, which we refer to as GI, to improve water quality and providing mini grants to fund small scale water quality improvement projects. So um, when we talk about uh, stormwater pollution, what we mean by that is the pollution that can come off of the land uh, that is like in the form of litter, fertilizers, anything that can be washed off the land, that becomes pollution and that goes to our sewers and it can be, uh, goes directly to our lakes and, and uh, I'm sorry, goes directly to our streams and rivers and then eventually out into the lake. So we do a lot of other things at Sweetwater, but these are the main ones that are connected with our mini grant program. We've got a slide here on a watershed. I think most of you are familiar with this. Um, but uh, for the sake of the filming and so on, I'm just going to say, Sweetwater works in the five major watersheds in the southeastern Wisconsin area, the Kinney Knick, Milwaukee, Menominee, Oak Creek, Root, and the Lake Michigan direct drainage area. The direct drainage area means the area that's very close to the lake area. So it's the, it's the land that's right next to it mostly. So in the little um, diagram here, it shows what a watershed is, or it, it kind of, uh, it's uh, drawn out here where a watershed is actually any water that comes down, that's rainfall, that comes down and falls onto the land and drains directly to a water body. So in this picture, it shows kind of like uh, how the land maybe comes to a peak over here. And uh, if, if it is raining, the water is going to drain this way. And, uh, it will also drain on the other side of the of the peak and go into another water body that's that will uh, that drains downward to the to the other water body. Now it depends on how fast the rain is coming down and for how long. Um, much of it runs, some of it runs off and goes directly into the surface water, but a lot of it will infiltrate into the into the soil and then into the ground water. So it can replenish the groundwater, which is a good thing. 
you need to have the groundwater and uh, much of the time the groundwater can also eventually drain into the water body itself. Let's go on. Green infrastructure. I'm just going to read these out. Green infrastructure is an alternative, cost-effective approach to reduce pollution coming from stormwater runoff. Rather than resort to costly construction of new pipes and building larger treatment facilities, green infrastructure uses ecological processes to capture, detain, infiltrate, and filter stormwater on or near to where it falls. So the important thing about um, about the fact the fact is is that we can't build any more pipes uh, in urban areas, especially is what we're talking about. Uh, there's there's only so many pipes that you can put underground uh, and that you can pay for. So what's what we're what we're um, trying to do is get people to use green infrastructure like a rain garden for instance that is carved out of the soil a little deeper and and plants are put into there so that the water when it rains will fall into there and it will uh, stay there until it in until it infiltrates into the soil so you want to keep it where it falls so that it can permeate into the ground that way it doesn't pick up all the other pollution that's on the land surfaces and it can just go into the ground replenish the ground the groundwater we have in Milwaukee uh, we have the deep tunnel which most of you know about uh, that was put in, in about 1994 by MMSD and the city that is a big huge tunnel that's in the downtown area it stores a lot of the water that is coming from all of the whole citywide sewer system and all of the municipalities out from there. Uh, there's 28 municipalities, I believe, that, are, uh, yeah, that uh, have their sewer systems coming into the, into the city of Milwaukee. That is stored there until it can be, until the wastewater can be cleaned at the, at the water treatment plant, at MMSD's water treatment plant. Sometimes it's raining so hard that uh, in a short period of time, or even over a long period of time, that it can't accommodate all the water, it can't store it all. So uh, sometimes there's these what we call overflows, where MMSD has to let go of some of that sewage from the sanitary sewers that it, the sanitary sewers are of course bring the water into the deep tunnel and they have to let it go directly into the lake uh, which is not good for the water quality but if they don't do that it can back up and go in and flood people's basements so um, this is something that we want to avoid using some green it, more and more green infrastructure can help to alleviate that problem I don't know if it's going to cure it but it's going to alleviate that and MMSD has some big goals to try to to alleviate that situation over the next many years a couple of decades this is a list of some of the examples of green infrastructure um, I'm not going to read the whole list uh, that's in your RFP. There's a, there's a list of all the different types uh, to give people ideas and what types of things can be done. The first one goes into the rainwater collection installations, which a lot of our applicants want to do, which is the rain barrels, the cisterns, rain garden, and native plants and landscaping. Um, so those are the ones that, are be, that we'll, we'll be very concerned with when Jay explains how to uh, measure how much rainwater that you'll be able to save from going into the sewer system. Some organizations have the capacity and ability to do bigger projects or things like a riverbank stabilization project or uh, uh, you know something else that uh, takes more time, uh, maybe some machinery. Uh, sometimes we fund things like that if they're part of a, even if it's part of a bigger project that needs more funding and and that's fine we can sometimes put our money toward that we don't do a lot of really big big projects I don't know how to exactly say we don't have a cutoff point but we will fund a, a, a project uh, that contributes to what other funders are contributing to 
Okay, the basics of the program. We, we need you to apply by November 1st. And each mini grant award is $1,000 to $5,000. You are eligible to apply if your project is going to be in one of, the, one of these five watersheds, which are the same as the rivers that are in the greater Milwaukee area, the Kinney Connect, the Menominee, the Milwaukee, the Root, and Oak Creek. Now, who is not eligible to apply are people who are, uh, are private businesses and units of government, but uh, any nonprofits or schools or uh, neighborhood associations, things like organizations like that, they might want to partner with a business or a unit of government in order to do the project, and that's fine. If you have any questions, just let me know. This is an important thing that we like to stress with our potential applicants, that we really do like to fund projects on a one-time basis because we want, we, we will uh, uh, fund new projects and we want to get them off the ground. If they don't have any other funding, um, if they're you know really small, we could provide that small amount that gets that organization to do it. Uh, whereas maybe otherwise they would, they would never do it. So we don't um, like to fund something over and over again, you know, as though it's almost like operating costs. We don't fund, we don't, we don't uh, want our funds to go toward operating costs, but uh, this is something different, I mean, so if, if uh, I think I said it pretty much there, so we just don't like to, to uh, uh, fund the same project over and over again. Program timeline, timeline, as I mentioned before, the deadline for the applications are November 1st. Then uh, we review all of the applications in November and December. We notify the winners by January 31st of 2019. Then we, the winners are awarded, awarded at our annual conference, which is on May 2nd this year, uh, not this year, in 2019. And then um, we have the final reports that we ask all of our winners to do, and that will be due again on November 1st of next year. Okay, now we're getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty with the actual application. Um, these steps are outlined on the website, and you need to look at those before you even press the button to apply, okay? Before you even get to the application, because you need to complete these things before you even uh, get into that application form. So we want you to do the project description and that's shown on the RFP um, and that has like questions A through K and um, that's all on the application requirements on the RFP. It goes through all of the questions on there. And so you need to complete each one of those, three pages or less, no more than three pages. The budget sheet is separate. Then um, number three says the budget template needs to be saved to your computer. So you need to take the budget sheet that's online. We only want to use the budget sheet that we have. We don't want you to create your own. We'd like you to use ours. So you take that, you save it to, to your computer, and you uh, complete it there uh, on your computer. You, plug in the numbers, and we'll be getting into the budget sheet in more detail later. We'd also like you to make up a project summary, and if you can be as clear and comprehensive and concise as you can, 100 words is not a lot, so um, just try to get it all in there, and um, you can use that uh, when you you can upload that then to the application for and when you're done with that. The reason why we ask for that is because when it comes to the, our conference, we put any of the, the winners, their 100 word summary will be used in the conference booklet to describe what your project is. So now, once you've completed those three steps, you're ready to click on the button on our website. It's a blue button uh, that says online application form. And then you'll get into the form, and it looks like this. This is a little cut off, uh, but the upper part has all your contact information. And then here's your 100-word summary that you can cut and paste and put it in there. Make sure you do a word count and 
have no more than 100 words. And this is just where you're going to upload. You're going to click on the button there and put in your project description, which is the answers to those questions. And here's where you're going to upload your budget, your budget sheet. Okay, so that's just how it looks when you go in there. Now, this is where Jay is going to come in and explain to you about question B2 that's on the RFP. So take it away, Jay. Yeah, thank you. Oh, so, no. oh, doesn't he? Uh, it's okay. I think he said he can pick it up on the mic. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm just here to talk about one specific question. And this is only uh, for people who are actually installing green infrastructure. If you're doing an education program, we're not going to ask you to calculate the gallons that you get from talking to people, because that's hard to measure. <laughs> so we're just talking about if you do an actual GI installation, a rain garden, you know, bio swale, if you could somehow swing it. And so I'm just going to go through the basic steps of how you use this table. The table is part of your RFP, right by question B2. And it just breaks down, this is based on MMSD's Regional Green Infrastructure Plan and how we fund larger projects as well. So it's pretty standard in this area that, that we use these numbers. Um, I will say, like, if you have some sort of engineering designs that calculate this other new innovative technology, I mean, we would, I think, take a look at it. But this is sort of for the people who, you know, and these projects are typically smaller projects, they don't have somebody on staff necessarily to calculate things like this. So. Um, what you do is essentially you, you determine all the different GI types that you might be installing. So say you're doing a project at a community garden, you have 10 rain barrels, you know, you're doing 10 rain barrels, some native landscaping, and a rain garden. You just determine all those GI types, and you come um, to this table. If it's rain barrels or cisterns, you just use however many gallons the rain barrels hold, obviously, or the cistern. Um, but for things like, you know, native landscaping or rain garden, bioswale, you actually calculate the square footage and use that square footage times these units. So a bioswale would be seven and a half gallons per square foot. Um, and then you just add all those up. And what we'd like you to do is show your work. So don't just say like 10,000 gallons, we got it, because we have this, this, and this. We actually want you to like, if you have you know 10 rain barrels, say 50 times 10, you know 500, just break it down. Um, for us so we understand where these gallons are coming from so you don't just make a claim and we have no way of backtracking it it would be a lot harder for us to do that so um, yeah so that's pretty much the basics of it and then just add up the total and put it in your application and that's where the please show work part comes into uh, so just this is an example let's say you have five trees two cisterns with a 500 gallon capacity and a rain garden that's 400 square feet so the first two, um, you know, five trees, it's just a measurement that's in here per unit. It's not per square footage. So we just use the, the unit of 25. So you take 25 times that, those five trees. So that's kind of listed here. So five trees times 25 equals 125 gallons. And then you have those two cisterns, which again, you just use the unit that they are which is 500, so 2 times 500 is 1,000. And then the trickier ones are where you have square footage. And this can be an estimate, you know, you don't necessarily know because you haven't installed it yet, but try to do your best to estimate how big you think the rain garden would be. And so you do 400 square feet times 4.4, and that gives you your 1760 gallons. And then you just add it all up and get your total, and that would equal how many gallons per rain event that you could capture. So. It's pretty simple, I think. The only tricky ones um, really are trees and then rain barrels and cisterns. The rest, you measure the square footage or the estimated square footage, and you multiply times these values. Um, do you guys have any questions about this in particular? Okay. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. We're just trying to, in years past, we hadn't really gotten a good idea of how many gallons we were capturing with these projects, and we're just trying to, you know, really get credit for everything that we're doing in the area. So that's pretty much why we're doing this. All right, John. All right. I'll start up again. And I mentioned before that we'd uh, take up with the budget sheet. 
the main thing about this is, uh, well, first of all, you're going to start, you're going to put in the name of your organization up there, okay, and put the name of your project. This is an example spread uh, budget sheet. Yours is going to be blank, uh, but I wanted to show you how, it, how you would go about putting this together. So in the first part here where you have your item slash expenditure, you're going to put in all the things that you need to purchase. All the things that you need to buy, you're going to put in how much they cost, and is it each or hourly? In this example, it would be how much you're paying per hour, or whatever it might be, okay? They have lump sums for some of these over here. Um, put in how many, and then you're going to get your amount over here. Um, so the same thing with your labor, uh, you're going to put in your staff positions, or maybe you're going to get a contractor. You're going to say how much they're going to make per hour and um, how many hours you estimate that they're going to work. And then you estimate, you know, your estimation will be over here. Over here, make sure that you put in all of your funders. Uh, you're going to have uh, in kind funders, possibly, maybe not. Uh, that you would put the amount in the in kind support. Over here, if, if you designate that this is in kind, you know, then you're going to match it up over here. If you've already got the funding, you know you're going to have it, you put that under secured funding, okay, like this one here, ABC Business Donor, it's secured. Now, let's say um, you've got a grant in and you, don't, you won't know till December whether you're going to get the grant, but this is due on November 1st. So that's considered unsecured funding, so you're going to put that under there, the unsecured funding. And so then all of these things are going to add up over here. The most, one of the important things, you want to show what Sweetwater, what you're asking Sweetwater for. That's in the green column here, OK? So you want to put down just what I said, what you're asking Sweetwater to pay for. And that will be in this green column. And this is the total that you'd be asking them for, and you would be putting that in the application form as to the total amount that you're asking from Sweetwater, okay? Now, the thing that's gonna happen is that you're gonna have these two numbers, if everything works correctly, these two numbers, your project cost subtotal, should be the same as your total project cost, okay? In this instance, it's showing 53,395 here and over here. So what happens is that when you add up your, all your costs, including your items and your labor, it's just your items and your labor, okay? That doesn't have to do with the funding sources. That will give you your total of your project cost. And then when you add, when you put all four of these columns in, those will all automatically add up and give you the total here. I've got the formula in there that will automatically add those up. And you know you might have done something wrong if this doesn't equal this, okay? I'm trying to think of what else I was going to uh, bring out on here. Are there any questions about this? Uh, where we are? Okay. Sometimes you just have to estimate as much. Sometimes you don't know for sure how much funding you're going to get otherwise if you need to have more than what you're asking from Sweetwater, you just have to make your best estimate so that we know, you know, what, what you might have coming. Yes, Tony? Do you have a, um, a list of, um, so say, say for instance, the trees cost a certain amount. Is there a list of, of vendors that, um, that you recommend or that, like, just to kind of estimate the total, total price for, for something, for organizations that may not, may not know kind of where to look? Mm -hmm. um, is there like a set um, or preferred um, method of going about that? The question was, uh, do we have a, a list of vendors uh, or people that you can contact to find out what the basic costs are of some of the items that you might need? And the answer is a short no. We don't have that. And that's where your, your homework comes in because that's part of the research that you need to do when you're making out this budget, when you're making out the grant. You have to make phone calls, 
you need to call a few vendors, uh, try to compare prices. You want to try to probably get the best price that you can, and uh, and then you can make an estimate from that. And, and maybe you're already figuring who you're going to buy from by doing that research. No, uh, we don't have that, but I think that MMSD has a list of preferred vendors. Well, I wouldn't call them preferred. We, we don't necessarily, oh. we can't give you know recommendations know. because we're a public agency. We can't say, oh, this one's good, don't go to that person. We, we just have a list of what's called the green vendor list of organizations that do green infrastructure or you know sell native plants, things like that. We can't necessarily tell you which one's good or not, but it is a list at least to get you started of like who you could call, and that's on our website at freshcoastguardians.com. So you could go there as a starting point, um, and you could also call the Fresh Coast Resource Center, which I was going to mention at the end, anyways. But that's what these half sheets are here, and many of you are already familiar. But if you're not, you know we have this resource center, the Fresh Coast Resource Center, where you can um, just. Either call, stop by, usually um, we're open, well no, we're always open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4, and then we can also show up at fr on Friday if you call ahead. Uh, and you can also check our website out at freshcoastguardians.com. But we do services basically for all green infrastructure related um, projects and other things, grant funding opportunities, uh, GI design services. We actually currently have a larger contract for people that are really doing big scale design. So if you know a school or somebody that's doing a really bigger project, we have design services that are open for right now too. So that's a good resource for you, especially as you're going through this process. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jay. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we've got on the table here. You can take these postcards with you. And as Jay said, it's on their website, freshcoastguardians.com, all one word before the dot com, of course. I have one more question about that. Uh, yes. We may get into it too, but um, do we have to include um, the invoices for um, the, the items that we're? No. The question is, uh, do, are, is it required to include invoices for the items that are being bought? And the, the answer is no, no invoices are necessary. Yes, and I might have missed this as I came late, but so we're part of the. Um, Playground redevelopment project uh, with uh, Reflow. Um, can we, because we're in our funding year for that, so is that something that we can use this grant to go towards? Is that allowed or is that? Yeah. I'm not sure of the question, um, whether you can use it. To well, okay, so part of our redevelopment of our playground involves a lot of mini projects related to that, like we're putting in a bioswale, we're putting in a cistern. Um, we're putting in a greenhouse, you know, all of those things, and the overall purpose of it is to help um, the stormwater runoff. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so, like, we've done the plan for it. Now this year is our funding year for it. So mm -hmm. we're going to start um, looking for grants and things to help fund that. So can I utilize this grant? Can I take one of those mini projects from that? and apply it towards this grant, would that still be okay? Well, I think the question is uh, whether you want to um, uh, be able to use the grant in this calendar year or next calendar year. Is that what it has to do with? No, when I, you can apply the grant? Well, I guess that would have to be because we would, well, we, could, we couldn't, because we're not going to break ground till next year. Yeah. The fact is, is that we do take these applications now, and Jay can maybe help out with this too, but we, ta we take, um, uh, the question is asking about the timing of, of the project. We take the applications now. We won't uh, be, we'll be judging these in November and December. We won't award them until January 31st of 2019. So this is actually part of our 2019 program. So we're doing this now in the fall, but this is for the 2019 program, and you would be implementing your project in the spring, summer, fall of 2019. Does that answer your question? Yes I, and no. I know, okay. I know, I know what your question <laughs> is. You yeah, because yeah. I'm, wor I'm working with some of the schools as well, not your school in particular, but uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, exactly what phase you're in. Yes. <laughs> so you're, I mean, you have a large scale project. Yes. And earlier on in this presentation, we talked about 
really this funding primarily is focused to get a kickstart for projects that wouldn't happen if it weren't for this. So that doesn't mean that we don't, or I'm not, I don't want to speak for sweet, but like the mini grant program won't pay for part of a project, especially you know, with a school, that's a, that's a great place to you know, incorporate green infrastructure. Um, but you know, the first like, top tier is projects that are small scale that wouldn't happen if it weren't for this. And that's not to say that everything in your plan has already got funding. You, you don't know that yet. So I would still encourage you to apply and just explain specifically what part of that, you know, this project, funding, yeah. yeah, what that funding would go towards. And maybe um, look at the other funding opportunities that are out there that you will be applying for. Maybe talk to Justin mm -hmm. from, you know, Reflow. Yeah, well, yeah, we have a meeting. Because there's some that are there's some parts of your projects that are going to be easier to get funding and other parts of your project that there's less resources for. And maybe talk to him about what this one would be best for, okay. if you know what I mean. Yep, I'll ask him, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, if I can continue on that, I mean, that's why we have this other funding sources area on the mm -hmm. budget sheet. Does that pertain to what you're asking? Yeah, that? it definitely, yeah, that definitely yeah. does. Like if I, we, like, yeah, because we know some work, some of the funding is coming already but not all of it. So. Okay, yeah, and then you need to do the best estimate that you can if you don't know where it's gonna come from. So you're gonna put in your secured funding, what you know that you have for sure, mm -hmm. and the unsecured funding you're gonna need to estimate, but hopefully you have in mind how much you're gonna request from another organization and who you might be asking for that. Maybe you won't know right away who or what organization that you're gonna be asking, so maybe you'll have to just put uh, uh, unknown or something uh, and, then, and then put in unsecured. And then there's also a, a column for in-kind support. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about the? I actually have a question. <laughs> Let's see if I can answer So uh, it. what I'm wondering is, in-kind support here is here, but where is it in this column? Or is this just kind of an example case? Because it says paid labor slash time. Mm -hmm. Is this in-kind here represented somehow in here? If it adds up the same, I'm just trying to figure out. I, I think um, maybe that's something that has to be changed on the budget sheet, but okay. I, I guess right now it can be represented in here. Okay. Uh, maybe that's not real clear, uh, but I think uh, then you'd have to just take, let's say this position is in kind, I guess you'd have to take that 2100 and put it over here if it's in kind. So they should somehow match up and be clear about where that in kind is coming from. Because they, have, they both have to add up to the same they amount. They could put so. in kind uh, for uh, a such and such engineering company for position number four, and they right. have to put that right in here. Okay. That's the best I can do. I'm yes. sorry. Um, so that kind of takes me to another question. Um, say I, I like I have a small little project that I want to do at a different part of our our building or our other building um, outside. Um, do I and like I only want like three thousand dollars. I mean, do I have to have an in kind? match or can we just apply for a grant from you to cover the entire cost? Do you you know do not saying? have to have in-kind uh, services at okay. all. Right. Uh, as long as you stay within the $5,000 maximum amount that Sweetwater can award, you don't have to have in-kind. Okay. A lot of people do, but you don't have to. And is there any exclusions of what it might cover? Because I'm surprised you guys cover labor. So, uh, we only cover labor if it is dedicated labor. To, and the question is, I need to do this for the filming. Um, the question is, uh, she was surprised that uh, we cover labor costs. And what I'm explaining here is that we only cover labor costs for staff people if they are dedicated toward this project, not for covering them for a two week period in July, just as part of their regular wages. You need to estimate, you need to tell us how much they're making per hour and how many hours they are dedicating toward that specific project, not just the time that they have at this organization. Right. Or if it's not a staff person, if it's a contracted person, the same thing. You know, it would be like that. Okay. 
Now, um, what was it that you asked before? The other question, was there any limitations of what we can ask for? Right. The question was before, was that you do not have to show in-kind support for anything, for any funding that you ask from Sweetwater. It's not necessary. Like I, I was saying before, a lot of people do have in-kind support, but it is not required. You can ask up to $5,000 for a project, um, and that's the maximum. Um, um, so we don't, we don't go any further than that. But uh, you can have uh, other funders, or you may not have any other funders at all. Uh, and again, the, there's the $5,000 maximum. And then she's also asking, are there limitations to what can be asked for? Like, could she ask for a new, you know, pool? We need a new computer. No. <laughs> or, yeah, or whatever. I mean, like, what, no, are the, what are the constraints in terms we, of what you can ask for? Uh, as far as what you can ask for, right. uh, we do not pay operating costs for organizations. Uh, we do not pay for things that are outside of the particular project that you are working on. Now, if there's a piece of equipment that is essential to complete a particular project, you could, we could fund that item. Uh, in order for that project to get done, we could fund, fund uh, that. Okay. Okay? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other? All right, let's move on. I don't I think there's not much. Oh, another one? one? Yes. Um, there's not too much after this. So. Would um, along the paid labor uh, and, and intern um, be considered, and if, if there's any age um, limitations? Um, any if, what limitations? Kind of any age limitations that if it could be a high school student, um, student I'm thinking. Uh, the question is whether um, whether we would pay for interns to do the particular project, and if there's any age limitations. There are not any age limitations. You can ask anybody that you'd like who you feel will be up to completing the project to your expectations, and you can pay them whatever you want, but as long as you document it, is, that's what we need. And yes, we do pay for interns that are dedicated to a project. All right, just a couple more. Because now we're going to get actually into the post-award information. So if you win a grant from Sweetwater, these are just a few of the things that we ask people. Uh, we ask them to sign a grant agreement. Um, and only after they sign that agreement um, will we be able to issue the first check. We do it in two disbursements, the, uh, and we divide the, the total grant amount in half. So the first check would go out as soon as the grant, is, grant agreement is signed. We provide signage. For signage for each project site. Um, we ask that you write up a brief written project report that is online. Just a few questions like, did everything go as you expected? Uh, what did you learn from the project? Very general questions and uh, how could Sweetwater improve the program? Things like that. Um, we really, really want photos of the project. It's really important in progress and when completed or even like before and after. That's really great to have that, those photos. And it's so easy with the, with the phones uh, and so on. And then we also, pro we also do a poster presentation at our annual conference, which I mentioned before is going to be May 2nd, 2019. And uh, we provide a template for you to use and all you have to do is plug in your pictures, plug in your text and uh, we print it all out. It's very colorful. It can be a great opportunity for you as a winner to advertise your project and it could be useful for you as an organization because we get them back to you and you can use them to display whenever you're talking about your project. Okay, so that's it on the presentation. You can contact me at any time. I've got my business cards on the table over there. Um, my phone number, my email address. This is where you're going to want to go when you're applying. You're going to go to sweetwater.org. That's Southeast, Southeastern Wisconsin Watersheds Trust, water.org, slash mini grants. And you'll get to the page where it tells you a little intro about mini grants. And then there's a button that says um, go to the RFP and the application. And you click on that. And then you've got all the information 
uh, on the uh, project description, the budget sheet, and all that stuff right there. Question. Is there, a, do you give only one grant out, or is there multiple grants that you award? Oh, a multiple. Uh, usually, um, as long as we get applications. Uh, so the question is, uh, do we only give one grant out, or do we give out mu multiple grants? Uh, we, on an average, we get maybe between 25 to, well, actually, maybe between 30 and 35 grants per year of, of applications, I should say, submissions. And uh, so then, when the judges get together, then um, we go over, well, we have to read all those, review all of those, and then we score them. We have a scoring sheet over there if you'd like to look at that. And uh, you can, uh, so, then, so then we figure out who will uh, be selected according to how much funding that we have. Cut! Yeah. <laughs>